Shalom Aleichem. Chaim Baruch Halevsky here. Chabad of the West Side Family Programs. New York City. Exercising my mind, my body, and my soul together with you in this Central Park Reservoir area. And uh, I'd like to share a thought that this is uh, relevant and impactful and meaningful and may change your life or someone you know. So this couple who were thinking, contemplating marriage <laughs> came to me recently and asked about whether or not I think this is a good idea. And each one, spouse A and spouse B, potential spouse A, and potential spouse B presented their struggles with the potential struggles that could be in the relationship. It matters that were very important to them. And uh, obviously, otherwise they wouldn't bring it up. And a lot of it was Jewish-oriented, halachically related, like this person you know, spouse A is talking about spouse B and saying this person, you know, used to be more observant in different ways and now the person is not as observant. Is it something that might change back because observance is very important to me? And going to the nitty gritty details and to fine tuning examples of where the halachic significance uh, to this person is strong and, and for the spouse, other spouse it's not necessarily so strong, but it was once upon a time. Do you think it'll get back? Do you think it will stay the same? And questions of the sort and others. So luckily, you know, where do we turn to for answers? We turn to the Torah. And uh, one of the great things I told them that I believe is a strength that keeps my marriage going strong, Baruch Hashem, is that my wife and I have a weekly, used to be more often, but right now it's at least once a week on Shabbos morning. We learn some Torah together. together. Just that morning, I had learned a beautiful thought from about last week's Parsha and I shared it with them. I just took out the I said, your answer is right here. My perspective. My perspective. Right over here. Go ask someone else. It's fine with me. Book and we look together. A talk from the Rebbe. And in, in short, a condensed version of that talk is as follows. It's one of the most more popular the teachings of the Rebbe on this Parsha of Lech Lecha, and it goes something like this. In, this. in the beginning of the Parsha, of the Torah portion, it says, Vayomer Hashem al Avram, and God said to Avraham, to Abraham, Lech Lecha, go towards for yourself, go to you. Me Artsecha, from your country, from your land. Mi Moladetcha, from your birthplace. Mi Beit Avicha, from the house of your father, from your father's household. Three places to go from. El to Haaret Asher Areka, to the land which I will show you. So God tells Avram, leave three places from where to leave, but he doesn't tell him to where to go. The Rebbe asks, isn't this different than what you would expect if you're telling someone to go somewhere, you tell him where to go, he'll find a way how to get there, and he knows automatically where he's leaving from. Duh. Or she. So the question is obviously why is God in the Torah over here telling Abraham to leave from three locations from your land, your country, from your birthplace? And he's not telling him where he's going. 
it's obvious where he's going to leave from. It's not obvious where he's going to go to. And then the Rebbe goes on to ask another question and even to get into the more gritty details, you see that the order is, doesn't seem uh, correct. When you leave a place, you don't first then your birthplace, then your home. You first leave your home, then your birthplace, then the country. So the Rebbe asks about that. The uh, Rebbe gives a beautiful, very relevant, powerful answer and says that the idea of leaving these locations is not just a physical, leaving a physical place, but it's an ideology that needed to assume the perspective that Avraham needed to learn and acquire in order to have a relationship with God. In order to, for Avram to have a relationship with God, it didn't matter where he was going. What mattered was what he's going to leave behind. And the Rebbe explains as follows. When God said, leave your land, your country, what is the country, the land? Land is the land upon which, upon which you stand, the ground. These are the foundations. Shalom. Shalom 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 Israelis. Uh, so, the Rebbe says, the land on which you stand, that's your foundation. Those are your belief systems. That's what makes you who you are. Me he says, that's the land, the foundational understandings that you have on life. If you want to have a relationship with God, you've got to leave them. You've got to leave them behind. You've got to drop them. Mimo Ladetacha, it's your birthplace. Those are the customs and habits and culture and society norms that you learned from your environment. What do you learn from the place you live? Every place is different. And we have to leave those behind, too, if you want to have a relationship with God. And this is from the education that you received at your home. It's not always aligned exactly with what God wants. We have to leave that, too. And where to go doesn't matter. Once you leave your expectations behind, and you surrender yourself to the relationship, and it doesn't matter where you're going. You don't need to know where you're going because you're going with God. So it doesn't matter where you're going. The location, the destination doesn't matter. It's like, it's the journey. It's not the destination. Similar to that. It doesn't matter where you're going because you're going with God and you've surrendered yourself to the relationship. This is what we learned together, my wife and I. Let's talk from the Rebbe. And this is what I shared with this couple who are asking about marriage advice. And I was thinking to myself, replace God with your wife or your husband. This is the way Judaism views a marriage. We learn about our relationship with our spouse from our relationship with God and vice versa. And over here, too, if you come into a marriage with great expectations. I'm going to change this person and this, that, and the other. But the small stuff, that's exactly how you're It'll be as good as how your expectations are met. And it's a fruitful experience. That's pretty much the story. So, of course, it's important to be on the same page. It's important to have the same goals, the same values. And that's what you look for. But don't go into a marriage looking to change the person and hoping that it's going to be different later on. Absolutely not. So take the person as they are 100% or leave them 100%. Don't try to change them. Those are my thoughts. Of course, I'm not 
trying to minimize the value of halacha, the Jewish law. It's important. You know, we, we're as strict as can be when it comes to halacha with ourselves. But we don't try to enforce that on others and change other people, uh, especially not in a marriage. Story, just in passing, I will mention it quickly, is that uh, somebody I know personally, where the uh, of a family, this was a while back, close friends of ours, completely observant, Chal of Israel, Shetel, completely, and her husband didn't at all participate or want to. It went on like this for a long time, for years, and she asked the Rebbe what to do, and the Rebbe said, Shalom Bayis, peace in the home, it's the most important mitzvah to focus on. And she did. For 25 years, they lived peacefully together. She was completely observant, 100%, and he was not. 25 years later, he reconnected with his roots and he joined the club too. Their marriage is the most beautiful marriage and it stayed that way, notwithstanding those differences. Thought for today, my thought for today, God bless you all. Share it if you feel it's relevant to somebody else. It might be relevant to you too. And it's relevant to me today. Every single day, we have our challenges and our opportunities to grow and to live and to aim high and reach a goal with ourselves. And sometimes that means letting go of our expectations of others. God bless you.